Alrighty, so welcome to a practical applications trading class today being Monday, October the 17th. We're going to go through and let's get some questions answered that you may have. And I'm also going to ask you a couple questions, which hopefully will, will again, keep bringing these pieces together for you so that you're going to be, uh, so you're going to be the best traders in the world. How about that? <laughs> Can I hear a yes? All righty. First question comes from Emily. Emily's question was, one of my questions today is, if the stock goes down on a covered call, does strap that loss from your money you made on the short call to determine your profit? So, short answer is, is, if I can get everything I want ready here. Um, so I want to put it a little bit simpler. How do you calculate profit or loss on a covered call? Emily sounds good. I'll take a peek at it. And I did get that. Uh, by the way, I was at Wood Badge for three days. What an amazing training with stake presidents in the area. Uh, we had three stake presidents and a regional representative there. It was an awesome opportunity for me to, uh, to learn about scouting and how important it is in the church. So, I'm going to use some miscellaneous numbers. If you buy to open a $100 stock and short a $2 covered call, what is the net debit in your trade? What is that net debit in your trade? Well, you buy to open for $100 the stock, and you sell to open a $2 covered call. 100 minus $2 equals a net cost basis of $98. So that is also equal to the risk in your trade. Emily, tell me, how far does your stock go down? I don't know. Make up a number. Tell me how much your stock went down. It can be the one you traded. It can be four bucks. So the stock goes down four dollars because Hillary is getting elected, right? This is kind of fun for me. I'm sorry. So how do you calculate 
the net or how did you what did you call it Emily you called it cover call loss from your money net or loss from your money if you wait until expiration can't spell worth beans can't type worth beans the whole covered call credit is yours to keep ninety eight dollars so the short answer is you have a hundred dollar stock minus the four dollar loss plus you get to add it back in you keep the two dollar covered call credit equals a net loss of two dollars you still own the stock at ninety six dollars a share with a cost basis of ninety eight because you sold and lowered your cost basis using a covered call and now what do you do so taking a look at this everyone else that bought the hundred dollar stock the same day you did they're down four dollars you are only down two dollars because you were proactive you decided you know what I'm going to short a covered call. I'm going to create some revenue here. So I'm going to short a covered call. So already you are doing better than your passive, uh, your fund income because you have shorted a covered call. You gave yourself 2% of downside protection. Well, the problem is your stock lost four. Your stock lost four dollars on the way down so you are down two dollars overall what's the next thing you do what is the next thing you guys are going to do Jeff Emily what do you think what is the next thing you guys are going to do buy Disney yes especially if it'll go back up to that 126 128 range heck yeah Emily what are you gonna do here buy more stock at a lower price make another covered call okay well buying more stock means you gotta come up with a lot of money if you did this on a hundred shares to buy more stock at 96 to dollar cost average You've got to come up with nine thousand six hundred dollars, but I like where your head's at. What if you sold another? I can't see when I'm typing; it's hidden behind. What if you sold another covered call? Maybe sell at one hundred again now you're not going to get as much because the stock is now trading down at 96 Oop, 96 excuse me I may sell a 100 again 100 strike covered call again for maybe you'll only get a dollar 80 this time so let's work the numbers
what is your new cost basis now? What is your new cost basis now? Jeff, you always figure. Uh, Jeff asked the question. So for the new cost basis, you don't figure out the past losses? Um, no, your cost basis stays the same. But your past losses just mean that you're down. So those are two separate things. So what's the new cost basis? Correct, Emily. Your cost basis is still 98. You've lowered your cost basis $2 by selling a covered call. So your cost basis is still 98. But the stock is trading at $96. So you are down $2 in your trade. New cost basis with shorting a covered call. You subtract that $1.80 which is going to give you a new cost basis of $96.20. So, the stock stays flat for another month and closes at $96. What is your new cost basis after the covered call expires. What's your new cost basis on your stock? You sold a covered call once in month one, one you know, month one Month two, you sold another one. What's your new cost basis? You sold a covered call. You got a credit into your account. Cost basis now is at 96.20. It expired. You get to keep that credit. It's yours. What is your profit in the trade? And I probably should say overall profit in the trade. Jeff, I'm ignoring your question, but I'm going to go over it in a quick minute here. Aha, uh -huh, a negative 20. Profit in the trade, cost basis, 96.20 minus 96. Stock currently trading at equals you are down a whopping 20 cents. So the stock goes back to $99. 
and closes the month at 99. What is your new cost basis? What is your new cost basis on your stock if it trades at 99? I can see Keith here in the office. His eyebrows went up. His eyes went back and forth. He's got a grin. He's covering his mouth. Let me give you a hint. It's a trick question. What's the new cost basis if the stock goes to 99? Ooh, Keith just said cost basis is the same. The stock going up to $99 has nothing to do with your cost basis. Your cost basis is still your cost basis is still $96.20. The stock going up in price does not change how much you lowered the cost basis, what you paid for the stock. That's just movement of the stock. What you paid for it is a fixed price. What changes? What is the overall profit now in the trade? Let's work that one through. Yep, your cost basis is 96.20, right? We shorted a covered call in month one for $2. Lowered our cost basis from 100 down to 98. The second month, we couldn't quite get $2 because the stock was trading at 96. We only got $1.80. So we got to lower that cost basis from 98 down a buck 80. Puts our cost basis at 96.20. But what's the overall profit in the trade? Stock trades at, ooh, 99 minus the cost basis of 96.20 equals a profit. Oops. Crying out loud, Hurley. A profit of $2.80. Yep, again, that loss, there's a difference between a paper loss and a booked loss. On paper, you could be down in your trade. But that's not, that's never a loss until you book it, until you close it out. So here we go. Month three, the stock, okay, let's just go month three. We decide to short one more covered call. And we're going to do the 100 strike again. Our stock is trading at 99. That's close to 100. So we're probably going to get a credit this time of like $1.97. At the end of the month, our stock closes at 101. What is our new cost basis for this month?
What's your new cost basis? Okay, remember, you bought the stock at 100. In fact, let's do this one. Remember, you bought stock at 100. And you subtracted a covered call credit of $2. And a covered call credit of a buck eighty. And what are we subtracting this month? And now a covered call credit of a dollar ninety seven. Which should equal we can go to last month, right? Ninety six twenty minus in fact I better put that in here. Last month cost basis including the past covered call credits ninety six twenty minus a buck ninety seven and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a calculator for this. Ninety six twenty minus buck ninety seven ninety four twenty three. Okay. But the stock now trades at one oh one, which means what does that mean if the stock trades at 101? End of the month, options expiration occur. What does that mean? Keeve has a bit of a, a look on his face. Jeff types a question mark in. Emily. You got called out. At what price did you get called out at? at 100. Your obligation, you sold a covered call, your obligation in taking that credit, and Keeve, don't worry about typing all this, writing it all out, I'm going to email it all to you guys. Um, you are obligated to sell your stock at $100. Does someone want to buy your stock for 100 if it's trading at 101? Keeve says yes, Keeve why? Why is someone going to buy your stock for 100 when it's trading at 101? I love it. He said, hey, they can buy at a, a lower price, sell at a higher price. They save a buck. They get to save a dollar to buy your stock. So of course they're going to buy your stock for 100 Why would someone go out and spend an extra dollar out on the market when they can go ahead and buy yours for 100 They're like, hot dog, I'm, I'm, I'm in the money. I'm making money. I'm good to go. So of course they're going to buy your stock from you at 100 What if they did it on 1,000 shares? That saves them a thousand dollars. So they're all kinds of excited. They're like, yeah, I'm buying 
kick butt stock at uh, $100 when I don't have to pay 102 So your profit is equal to $100 minus the overall cost basis which is $94.23 which should equal a profit of roughly $5 and um, 77 cents, right? Because if you add 577 to 94, it should equal 100. And yeah, minus, it'll be at least 30% tax. So, a 577 divided by 100 equals a... 5.77 percent return on investment. Well, Kevin, that's only five dollars and seventy-seven cents on a hundred bucks. That's true, but the historical average is only seven point seven five in three months you've got two-thirds of the historical average of the gains for the year. Last year, the stock market was down seven-tenths of a percent. For a three-month period, for a three-month period, you did pretty well. You probably crapped your drawers in month one when the stock went down to 96 because of course it probably did that the first week that you put on your covered call when it was supposed to say sideways. But this is a, a pretty interesting explanation because in all reality I hope you're seeing there's no perfect magic bullet to trading. There's no do the same thing every single time and you make gobs of money because everyone would be doing that. Your decisions that you're going to make based on your best educated guess from the information you have, I mean that first month that $100 stock probably should have been flat. That's why you sold a covered call. The second month, if it already dropped 4%, it might have been expected to drop another 6% down to 90, but it ends up going, you know, staying flat and not moving at all at $96. And that third month, the stock might have uh, been ridiculous and, uh, and was supposed to go down to 80, yet it goes up to 101. Uh, question, Emily, wouldn't you add your covered call to you through the profit? Yeah. Yes, that covered call is lowering your cost basis. We've had that covered call three times, $2, $1.80, and $1.97. We added that cost basis as profit or we subtracted it from our net debit, right? Because it's a credit, we subtracted it from our net debit. Wouldn't your overall profit be $7.74? Let's find out. I don't think so, but let's find out. Total covered call credits is equal to two dollars plus a dollar eighty plus a dollar ninety seven, which should equal. which should equal 2 plus 180 plus 1.97, which should equal $5.77.
profit for the last trade. Well, remember, stock is trading. Stock is trading at 101, but we are obligated to sell at 100. Even though the stock is trading at 101, since we are obligated to sell at 100, uh, I guess for a short answer is it doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter the stock's trading at 101. We've capped ourselves to take that credit in at 100. So it's kind of interesting. Where the stock is at is somewhat irrelevant to to where our trade's at. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. It's nice it's trading at 101, but that does not mean we're going to be more profitable. It just means the stock is trading at 101. Give me a quick second. I'm going to bring up um, our paper trading stuff. Yep. That's why, Emily, that's why I thought it would be a good idea to kind of put some of these together. Just to give us a uh, an idea of what's going on and why. I think this practical application starts to put pieces together. And I think we'll be doing this for another 10 or 11 weeks into the close of the year so that you have some uh, experience doing this. So, it's a good thing our internet's going so fast. So, I've got what I call a little slush fund account. Here is my slush fund account. I've got a cost basis of of 12 point 12.54 cents on a long call on Ford. So if I've got a cost basis of a long call on Ford for my Bybee group here, my Bybee education group, it looks like it's a December 16, $13 long call. That was Jeffrey Dunyon right there. So if you heard that I was teaching a class and who he'd hang up. Um, what does that mean? What does that mean in this position? In fact, maybe I can take a screenshot here. Don't do that. Be nice. Treat me nice. I'm going to go back to... All right, in my slush fund, <laughs> I have a couple interesting little trades. We call it our slush fund account. It's really uh, 
Jared surgery account for my boy who got his foot run over and the amount of money that we owe and um, the amount of money we own for deductibles is killing us this year. Just to let you know, with cheap Humana insurance, if you run over your kid's foot after he breaks a jumping out of a car, you'll owe roughly $19,600. Have no reason why I can't seem to catch up this year. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. So let's take a quick peek at my Ford long calls. Let's make sure I can see what you guys are typing in. So I have December 2016. $13 long calls that I paid roughly $12 and <laughs> let's try 12 cents, 12 and a half cents for a week ago. Overall risk in the trade. It's a directional long call. What's my overall risk in this trade on 10 contracts, actually? It looks like it's 10 contracts. Yep. 10 contracts with a cost basis of, in, of in, including commissions, $12.54. Overall risk in the trade, $125.40. And I should say it's equal to 254 times 1,000 shares, because I'm doing 10 contracts. Overall risk is $125.40. I have the right to buy Ford at $13. Well, let's see how good of a trade this is right now. Ford. So I put this trade on Ford. <laughs> if I go ahead and get a, a pen here, we'll choose a black color. I obviously put Ford's trade on right there at 12 bucks. And it went down and it went down and then it went really down. And then I have no idea what that little black one is. And then it's up. So it was up for the day. The black one's up, and then it went down. Um, so Ford's not quite at uh, $12. It's at $11.94. Now, I can make a justification. Well, it looked like it's at a support level. For the last three months, Ford has been up year over year on sales. And more importantly, Ford has taken off with its aluminum bodied lower weight trucks that are cheaper on gas. Finally, their new trucks that came out at the beginning of this year got some traction. They started to make some sales over the last three months. It looks like, technically speaking, Ford has to get through this 
which is 1227, has to get through this. Oh my gosh, Ford has to get all the way up here, like a 9.2% gain, till technically I'm guaranteed to make a profit on those $13 long calls. So will someone please type in or tell me, Kevin, what the hell are you doing? Someone tell me, help me understand. What could I be thinking here? Other than I'm just an idiot, I'm, I'm some other trader that thinks they've got it all figured out and uh, never does. Emily, I only have $125 at risk. So let me, let me go ahead and put it this way. What the heck am I doing? Only have 125 bucks at risk. That is correct, and I, I do like that. It could make a run like July and get up to 14. Jeff, I love your, your thinking process there. That is really true because it could. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in here for myself but not likely, make a run to 14, which means $1 of profit times 1,000 equals a grand return on a $125 investment. What does that turn out to be? I think that's pretty funny. Let's, I'm, gonna, I'm taking a calculator right now. So if I took my 125 bucks divided by 1,000, right? No, it's 1,000 divided by 125. Eight. So if I took 1,000 divided by 125 equals an 800 percent return. And then what I do is I go and publish an 800% return and pay me 100 bucks a month and you too could have an 800% return. And some dummies out there, I'd probably get 100 dummies that would pay me $100 a month to learn how to make an 800% return. And the funny thing is, two of them might be worth $500,000, thinking they're going to get an 800% return on $500,000. And I did it on a paper trading account, although this is a real one, but I'm, I'm bad-mouthing my competition right now, the education business. I only really did it on a paper trading account, so you could have, if you had done this trade, made some money. Can you guys see how ridiculous and how stupid the education side of my industry is? Uh, Emily made the comment, you have until December for it to move. You are correct. But that only gives me two months. Most people aren't buying cars into Christmas. They're buying cheaper stuff than a car. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? There, Jeff nailed it. Kevin, you're one crazy dumb SOB. I added the extra part in there, Jeff, because I know you wouldn't want to say that to me face to face. He's just a crazy dumb SOB. Or, so... Crazy... Um, we have one other thing that uh, Emily said here. Emily said, I have until December to make a profit. And Emily, you were on, you were on the, the side there that, uh, that I'm going. Could we just crazy? Or I am just playing... We just lost our audio connection here.
Let's connect. Come on. All right, we lost our audio here, but we're back. Or I'm just playing earnings for a portion of the time that I will own the long call. Just because I have it out for two months doesn't mean I need to, to keep it till the end. I just need an earnings play. I'm going to go back to our chart. If our earnings has a bump up, let me get my pen again. If our earnings has a bump up to here, or maybe to here, or possibly to here, which is only 3 or 4%, right? Goodness, at $12, I spent 12 and a half cents. With the stock trading at 11.94, I've lost 3 cents already. A 6 cent movement down and I lost 3 cents. What if I got 4 or 5? Let's go four, five. What if I got five, six cent move? It's up to twelve twenty-four. I might be up as much as fifteen cents. And if it goes up to twelve fifty-ish, I could be up thirty cents. And my hundred twenty-five dollars that I put in there tack on 30 cents to it might be worth 420 so there's a 200% return come join the Hurley Academy education for 100 bucks a month because I'm so great or it's going to look bad it's going to really suck nuts and I'm saying this in a kind of vulgar way right here or the earnings is going to suck nuts. It's going to be horrible. The neat thing is, if it goes down, and I've done this the last two quarters with Ford going down, hoping, praying, thinking it's going to go up, if it goes down, what am I going to do? I've got a $13 long call with the stock trading maybe down as low as 9. See how far down it can go. Well, it actually will probably go down to 11. Looks like 11 is the next spot on the way down for Ford. Nothing in between <laughs> this range right here. So bad earnings, it'll probably go down to 11. Will someone tell me what the heck am I going to do? And survey says lose 12 cents. Emily says that there isn't a lot of profit and options in the Ford, it seems right now, so it is a gamble with a low debit possible to maybe make an impossible return. I, I like the way you said that. Man, my, my freaking... internet here does not like me 
Uh, the short answer is I'm up at 13. So the neat thing is, and what I was trying to show you, is see if we can get Ford's um, options to come up. If it goes up, my option will gain value. It's a long call. So I've got the right to buy the stock at a certain price for a certain period of time. It's not going to show me. I'm having an issue with the Internet here. What I was going to show you is if I went down a couple strikes, I could show you that I could probably short forward. If the stock goes down, I can short a call at $12 for December and take in an an eight and a half cent credit. Why is this important? Bought to open at a whopping big spender cost basis of twelve and a half cents. Take a covered call credit in for a big Huge spending, 8.51 cents, equals, doing the math again, zero point one two five four minus point zero eight five one means I have a 0 0.0403 cost basis per share times 1,000 shares because I have 10 contracts. Equals a net loss if Ford finishes below twelve dollars of times one thousand so I'm gonna lose forty dollars and thirty cents and with all the medical bills I gotta pay and the freaking new roof I gotta put on my house with it raining today I'm okay with a $40.30 loss. I'm actually okay with a $125 loss for the chance to make a thousand. The last two quarters, I lost $16 and $35 on this same trade. So I'm down 51 bucks. But it just has to go up a little bit. Just has to have a halfway decent earnings. And I'll make a couple hundred. This is a great way to grow a small portfolio.
How are we doing on time? Our hour is almost up. So I'm going to ask you guys a couple quick questions. And they're, they're going to be a little bit uh, difficult quick questions. How many of you have a notebook or a piece of paper or something that lets you know what earnings reports are coming up today or for this week and what earnings are coming up for this week? So you can be tracking it. You should have this week and next week's somewhere so you can start to track it. If you have not done that, you are setting yourself up for failure. How many of you have a watch list of stocks you think you'd like to trade? That you have their earning dates listed out in the future? If you are not doing that, you are setting yourself up for failure. How many of you have some paper trades on, some trades that you're just watching to see how they go? Sorry about that. Looks like we lost our auto connection. How many of you have some paper trades where you're practicing some of this, practicing some of this, putting it into your paper account? If you're not practicing, you are setting yourself up for failure. Take the time to care about what you can do and to do it now before it's too late, before you run into a bunch of money. This is the time to gain that knowledge so you'll know what to do and you'll be prepared when that time comes. It's kind of sad that God just won't bless us all with a million dollars at birth. Give us our talents and say, here's your talents, it's worth a million dollars. Good luck. Life doesn't work that way. But it can work pretty good for you. You just got to get some of this into, uh, into practical application. <laughs> Emily, good job. Start to put all these pieces together. I'm going to, uh, I will save this for us. Again, I'll convert it tonight so you'll get it tomorrow as, as usual. Uh, if you have paper trades, send them to me. Next week, we're going to go over some of these paper trades. I'll diagram them out. We'll write them out. We'll see where they're at. Um, I will probably do it from my house since I should have good internet as long as I don't lose my power. And uh, we will go from there. Uh, Emily, Jeff, you guys have a great day. I'll get this off to you. If you haven't done some of those things, start to write those economic reports down. Find out what's happening. Find out that today the Empire Manufacturing came in at a negative 6.2. No, 6.8. It was supposed to be a positive 2.0. The New York section of, of, uh, of manufacturing was over four times worse than expected. It was supposed to be a positive growth number. It was a negative number. Industrial production throughout the whole United States was supposed to be a positive 0.2, came in at a positive 0.1. It was 50% worse than expected. Capacity utilization was supposed to be 75.6, came in at 75.4. We're not using the capacity we have to manufacture goods as the market expects. We are below. Good reason why the day is down today. You could probably see the market swing as much as 100 points if we have a Fed speaker speak today, which we have three or four making comments at certain places. If one of those dummies says something that's negative and how we're going to raise interest rates no matter what, watch our market be down 100 points today. It's those type of information that we want to follow to start to see how the market's reacting to certain, uh, certain information that comes out. 
If the CPI goes up tomorrow or down, how does it affect the stock, up or down? Uh, we need some inflation. So if we see some inflation, the consumer price is going up, that is viewed as a positive for our market, so we will see it go higher. More importantly, it's going to be the housing market, though. The consumer inflation, not so important. The CPI is not that important compared to the PPI, the producer price, because that's on a on a bigger scale. Tomorrow, the NAHB housing index, if housing prices are still going up, we will probably see an update in the stock market tomorrow. If housing prices are going back down, it'll be the NAHB housing market index that will probably run how our market heads tomorrow if it goes up or down. Technically speaking, Emily, the PPI is more important than the CPI, and unfortunately, the inflation that we've seen has been 100% directly related to oil prices. So at this time, inflation is not exactly an important number like, uh, like it should be. Inflation was the most important number next to job claims in 2008. Excuse me. Had a bit of you on there. Um, so right now, again, inflation is not that important. PPI is more important than CPI because PPI is a macro view. Consumer pricing index is a, is a micro view. We're small compared to the overall people. And in all honesty, uh, it's just not that big of a deal because it's primarily run strictly by energy and, and low oil prices right now. Good question. Good question. And of course, you know, it's going to be really funny is watch some analysts on TV talk up inflation and watch it be the main issue, but, but it should not be. In all reality, inflation should not be a market mover tomorrow. It'll be the housing if, if housing still is on the track to be gaining in value. All right, guys. Hey, appreciate your time. I'll get this uh, recorded for you and out. I'll get these notes out to you, and uh, we will go from there. Appreciate your time today. Emily, I will look over your paper trades. Everyone else that has some paper trades, bring those out. Email them to me. Let me take a peek at them. Uh, next week, we're going to go over and see where some paper trades have been over a two-week period. Guys, take care. I'm going to keep trying to make this practical application worth your time, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll see what we can do. You guys have a great day. Talk with you later. Bye-bye.